are there steps yeah. to forgiveness? Are there steps to move out of that pain that we can help people with? I think it's great. I encourage people to be angry and get upset, mm. like go into it, you know, thank you. Like for showing me that I'm still upset. I'm still bitter. I'm still sad. I'm still pissed off at my dad and mom for doing this to me. And if that's real for you, then be in it, you know, mm. enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Mini in the house. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. The carnivore diet. Because of the heat. Honestly, you've really touched my heart. I, you know what's really interesting? I, what I want to highlight is your journey. I, by the way, love the title of your book. I think this, I know it was out a long time ago, but I think this idea of us all being our authentic selves needs yeah. to like bubble to the surface. 100%. So can you kind of give for my listeners that aren't familiar with your journey, a lot of us watched you as the juice guy and uh, your, your juice uh, Facebook videos were everywhere, but you crawled out of, a, uh, out of a deep hole as a child and have slowly been reinventing yourself. So can you give us in a nutshell? You, your... you, make, me, you make me sound like Schmeagol, like. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mindy. I am here. I'm <laughs> crawling out of my pit here. <laughs> Schmeagol. Yes. This is, we, well, he, let me tell you why. I think what happens is people can look at those of us that are educating on a public platform and they, they see the highlight reel. But yeah. what I want people to know is we've all had our bumps. We've all come from deep holes, including you, Drew. Yes. So give I, us uh... a little background. Yeah. So, so with me, and I never share this story to get any emotional response because I, that's not what I'm trying to create. I know there's a lot of influencers and people on TV that will use emotion to compel and like draw people in. And, and that's not what this is about. This is about Agreed. me sharing the story so that we can relate. Agreed. We have a lot more in common than we even know, you know, and Amen. I believe, I believe in unity. I believe in oneness. I believe in we're in this together. So my story is simple. And um, you probably have had many experiences like this in your life. I was fortunate enough, and I use these words because it was truly the biggest blessing in my life, is I was fortunate enough to be born into a home where I was physically abused. I was tortured. In fact, in, 19, in the 1980s, this is one of the biggest um, child abuse cases in all of Michigan. And the newspapers were talking about it at the time. So... I, if I couldn't tie my shoes fast enough, my dad would literally put cigarettes out on my head. Tell me to tie my shoes faster. I was thrown on the sidewalk. I was cut. I had like 30 stitches on my chest. I was cut with a knife. My sister had a, her eye stabbed with a fork, right? Wow. So all these things that we had happen as, as children. And you, you look at your parents as if they're, they're your God. You know, it's like, hey, you need to take care of me, mom and dad. I'm just this little you know, little wobbling around this little bean. And uh, here yeah. I am, like, take care of me. And you get the opposite. It's like, what the fuck did I do? You know, can I can I drop the up bomb on here? Of course, as oh, many okay. times as you want. Okay, I won't do it that much. But I'm, I'm using it for emphasis. So it's like, how did I, I show up in this life, materializing this? And I think it's the greatest blessing. Because at the age of five, the Jesuits say, if you can grab a, a boy by the ages of between one and seven, I can show you who the man is. And that's mm. been, that's been uh, my journey in life because wow. I believe God is source, spirit, whatever you want to call it, whatever you relate to. And my life has been far more powerful and prominent than probably most others, just because of the horrific beginnings that I've had. That's I've crazy. had to call on that. I've operated yeah. a lot of my spiritual gifts actually opened up from that as a yeah. youngster. Yeah. I was seeing all kinds of stuff. Um, and in sitting with that pain, you know, I built so many walls around my heart. I built so many walls around my waist. I was actually 40 pounds overweight, out of shape most of my life. I was escaping by doing a lot of external things. Never really got into hardcore drugs, but I, I was an alcoholic for a little bit, literally mm -hmm. drinking four or five days a week, partying all the time. And wow. I was abusing my body. Mm -hmm. And luckily God spirit sent some people in my life that have dramatically shifted and shaped who I am. They showed up as fathers. They showed up as masters, teachers, ascended beings, uh, all through the ages with me to remind me of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I came into the earth realm, abused, tortured, and now I've literally, I've healed a lot of the trauma. I'm still working on it every day. I don't think we ever get rid of it. 
Mm-mm. I meet with my psychologist uh, once a week. I talk to all kinds of other practitioners that have had similar experiences happen. And I have a wolf yeah. pack. I work out with my men every single That's day, awesome. you know? Yeah. So there's been a lot of healing of the mother wound and mm-hmm. of the father wound uh, coming into the earth plane. There's been a lot of titration of the trauma. Yeah. I think trauma is our greatest fuel source. Yeah. It's when so we true. use it, when we're, so when true. we see it, when we're able to access it and my life yeah. is living proof of that. Yeah. So amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I interviewed Bruce Lipton on this podcast and he said your subconscious mind get is fully programmed by the time you're seven. So, yeah. so much of your behavioral patterns will continue for the rest of your life based off of what happens to you from zero to seven. Yeah. So where do you turn? How do you, do, did you hit rock bottom? Like, How did you, what was the moment that said, I got to go do something different. And then what have you done along your journey to start to unwind those patterns other than hang around amazing people and learn, but it it has to be a conscious practice. I'm sure every single day. Yeah. And uh, conscious because conscious feeds the unconscious and the unconscious subconscious feeds the super conscious mind or the divine mind or the one mind or the unified field or the zero point field, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. So at a young age, I knew that. So before I would go to bed, I was doing affirmations at like five, six years old. My mom was like, what are you doing? Like, and I'm laying in bed and I'm like, you know, my eyes are rolling in the back of my head and I'm like, mom, my mom's freaking out. She's like, who is this kid? This kid is definitely different. Like he came to the planet with like a mission and uh, she, she still tells me stories today. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like I was six years old and doing this. So at six, I, I literally, so step number one is you got to forgive. You got to let go. So at six years old, I'm laying in bed and I'm a typical six-year-old. I prayed for the goldfish, the hamster that I had, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, my sister, even though we were fighting a lot of the time, right? Because brothers and sisters fight at that age a little bit. And I prayed to forgive the man who abused me, who tortured me. At that young age? At six years old. Wow. And I felt a release from it. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to forgive it. But I still had that anger because I'm an Aries, Aries moon. Oh, yeah. So I got a lot of fire in my energy, right? So yep. I'm like, I can pray to forgive this guy, but you know what? The love that I didn't get as a child, I'm going to make the world love me mm. and I'm going to figure out. And I already was good at like mere neurons and watching people's facial expressions and nonverbals because that was how I protected myself from literally being beaten. I had to watch every micro movement on, a, on an adult's face. So wow. my, one of my superpowers at that age became witnessing the, where they were in their mind based on their nonverbal expression of what was going to happen next. It was a protection mechanism turned into a superpower, right? Right. So Crazy. literally forgave my dad at six. Um, how can I have the world fall in love with me because I don't love myself because my parents never loved me. Mom never loved me. Mama wound, all the things, right? So then I went throughout the earth plane, uh, filling lots of voids still, like trying to have the world love me. And um, over time, thankfully, because of that wound, I've been able to materialize anything that I've wanted in this life experience at will, like instantly, because of Crazy. the vibrational frequency of that, right? Amazing. And now it's I've about 10 years ago, I got to a point where I was able to witness from outside of my mind, because, you know, Bruce would say it's in your unconscious subconscious mind. I think it's actually in the subconscious mind of everything. I think the invisible realm connects us all. You can look at the mm-hmm. biophotonic field of all life and there's synapses happening. String theory, quantum physics is now starting to prove it. So operating within the quantum realm, what you know, I already know, right? Yep. It's the negative expression of what the monks drop into state and actually pull forth. So 10 years ago, I realized that I had this ability to project my astral body, if we want to call it, or your other double, your etheric double out of my physical being and witness my consciousness and my thoughts. So I started swiping left and swiping right on what's working for me, what's not working for me. What do I need more of in this life? Well, abundance seems to be one of the things in the 3D material plane that people respond to. Okay, so I'm going to be rich, right? I'm going to have material wealth and abundance. And I just started, I put that program in And I did it in the physical way too. So I put sticky notes in my bathroom mirror. In my shower, I had these, you know, waterproof notes. You probably have those too. I'm going to, I'm making X. Vision boards all over the place. Yeah, vision board, vision movie, all the things. Adding music because I'm an emotional being and I knew music would transform my life. This was like 20 years ago, right? So I'm watching these things. I got all the, the material stuff 
and uh, the spiritual stuff, but something throughout my life still felt like I was trying to fill a hole. There was still mm. this missing piece. And it wasn't until about a year and a half, two years ago, where it's like, I don't need any of that. That's all part of the, the grand awakening or the illusionary aspect of this 3D realm. Mm -hmm. and I can simply be without any of that. Because just by being me in the book, You Be You, which I talk about this, it, that's our most powerful state anyway. It's, yeah. it's, not, it's not even the journey to get there, right? People say it's the journey that gets there that's more important. It's actually just being in the present moment. And you don't need to add anything to you. You don't need any more material wealth. You don't need to be any fitter, right? A six pack isn't going to change how you, yeah. how your perception is in the world. Even though all these things we think are going to shift us, what's really special about you is just you. You showed up here. That's just right. As yeah. Unique as our fingerprint is, throughout you know seven point five billion people, you have yes. a unique expression in yes. this earth. And we're here to enjoy it. This is a vacation. This is something to have fun. And yes, there's lessons along the way, but yeah. uh, it's been an amazing ride, my friend. Uh, amazing. You know, I also, one of the great conversations I had this year was with um, Rhonda Byrne, yeah. she, you know, from The Secret. And she yeah. wakes up every morning and she says, what amazing things are going to happen to me today? I can't wait to see what unfolds for me today. Yeah. And I thought it was such, I mean, I'm a positive thinker, but I, I would probably fall prey to getting up and being like, oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. I got to do that. Before she even gets out of bed, she sits and just says, what amazing things are going to happen to me today? It's such an amazing reframe when you live in a world where you're trying to get and, and constantly live outside in. It's, there's such relief when you go from inside out and trust, don't you think? Yeah. I agree with that. And I love Rhonda Byrne stuff. I watched The Secret every day for a year when it first came out. I didn't know anything about it. Buddy sent the link over to me, one of my good friends. She's like, Drew, you're going to love this. So I watched it and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to watch this every day. And I did it and it changed my life like yeah. dramatically. So it's amazing. good stuff. I yeah. think one of the things that I would add to what amazing things are going to happen in my life is uh, thanking your future self for mm. already creating those things for you. Mm, so I like to so envision powerful. this future Drew, like that's already completed the day because time doesn't exist. Time's an illusion, right? So future Absolutely. Drew is already out there making connections, making contacts, making these, uh, sh these wonderful moments, these, these moments of rapturous awe, you know? And he's just setting the path that. and it's connected to source, it's connected to God. And I know that yeah. that's happening. So when I can put myself in a state of, uh, thanking already for what's coming. Like it's just closing the field. It's closing the gap between what's happening now and the future moment. Yeah. So, um, I love yeah. that. Yeah. How do we, like, I totally resonate with what you're saying. I, I would say at 52 years old, I live that way as well. Like there's just yeah. a, I live in a state of gratitude. I understand that we have a 3d world and we have a 5d world. And I, I really love creating from this awe and trust. But when I look at my following, and I'm sure you have the same thing, we've got people that are listening that they were abused. They had horrible situations and they're trying to figure out how to turn themselves. Are there strategies we can give those people? Like how, do, what do you do if you're listening to this and you're like, well, that's great, Drew, like super happy for you that you found your way out but I was abused too. And I'm super angry and I can't let go of that. What are there steps yeah. to forgiveness? Are there steps to move out of that pain that we can help people with? I think it's great. I encourage people to be angry and get upset, mm. like go into it, you know, thank you. Like for showing me that I'm still upset. I'm still bitter. I'm still sad. I'm still pissed off at my dad and mom for doing this to me. And if that's real for you, then be in it, you know, mm. enjoy it because the human experience is all about enjoying the polarity. It's not about trying to hide from the darkness. It's about mm -hmm. adapting the darkness and that uncle that we all love and adore, but he comes over for Thanksgiving and he's not the guy that you want to sit at, at the Thanksgiving table. Because he's angry. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and whoever it is, like that's an aspect of you. And that's a great aspect. So when you choose to shift away from that and you have more love and you have more uh, kindness for you, because right now you're making it all about yourself and it's a beautiful mm -hmm. place to be right? Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. not, this world isn't about you. 
And when yeah. you get to that point where it's like, okay, I've made 20 years of my life about me. I've been upset. I've been bitter. Uh, look at the results that I've created because of this energy. Yeah. And you decide for a moment, you know what? I'm going to shift this. How do I shift this? When in doubt, focus out. How can I help somebody else? Oh, so and, true. And if you just start putting your attention and energy and lifting up somebody else every single day, just one person, and you start tracking that. Yeah. One person's life was changed today for the better because of something that I did today. Literally, yes. that's going to be your catalyst for the next vibrational increase to pull you out of what we would call depression, which is de-rest, which is taking a break from your avatar self. So your avatar self's reminding you, hey, you don't need to be this bitter guy or this bitter, bitter gal sitting at the table being this grumpy curmudgeon. Like you can yep. move away from this, you know, but the bitter self's going to want to hold on. And that's part yeah. of this. They yeah. got, they got energetic ties to you because their job is to keep you safe. Right. So it's literally having a conversation with this person at the Thanksgiving table. Hey, I know you've kept me safe all these years. Thank you for this, but we're going places and we get to grow. Like we're here on earth. This is the vacation. Look around. There's so much beauty. Look at these orchids behind us, right? Like there's so much to take in, in this life. So much. Yeah. So let go, let God, I got this. I'll be in conversation with you but you're not running the conversation anymore, mm. right? So mm. sit in the back seat, that old cranky curmudgeonous self, and we'll, we'll take the wheel from here. Yeah. And it's going to be a beautiful ride and know that that person's still going to be with you no matter what. Yeah. But yeah. So stop being a victim is what That's I hear. Victim. Like, like personal you, responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I um, have noticed uh, just in studying mindset over the years, uh, for a while, I, I studied Tony Robbins, which was, you know, su he's super interesting, a lot of, lot of little gems in there. And one of the things that, it, that, that he has is, is a mantra where you say, I am the voice, you know, and it's, it's like taking back control of that self-talk because it's that self-talk that will wear you down and I, you know honestly i see it with our fasting world that people go into these fasted states and then all their self-talk of like see you're not succeeding again see you can't do this see you're bad and that is not even their voice that is a voice of some adult or some situation that got implanted in there years ago and now they have an opportunity to identify it and and not and see that it's there but like to your point, let it out and take yeah. back control of your thoughts. Yeah, let it out. Take back control of your thoughts. Know that water is, you know, 90% of the water through the greatest MRI machines on the planet is in our body. Our bodies yeah. are 90% water. Water is used as the greatest uh, storage device and the, the best supercomputers we have on planet Earth now. Right. So if we change our water, quite literally, if we start using somatics, if we start using sound, if we start impressing 432, 532 hertz into our water, right, we start drinking spring living water, we put electricity in it, maybe we put a copper grid around the water that we have, and we start drinking this water, it's going to change and titrate a lot of the stored memories that you have of those thoughts that precede the actual thinking brain. So you change your water, you change your life. You change your food, you change your life. Organic food. Yeah. We're talking buy it at a local farm. A lot of people are eating shit, right? Processed yeah. food, sugar, dairy, wheat. No wonder you're having crap thoughts, yeah. right? Your body, the land of Egypt in the Kabbalistic stuff of the past is in your gut. Yeah. So if you're lost in the land of Egypt, like the Israelites were for 40 years, you're actually lost in your gut. Yeah. Like you have gut dysbiosis, you have leaky gut, which is why I love what you do because fasting helps heal that. Yep. So yeah. when we allow our body to do what it does, the miracle machine that it is, we heal our gut, we give it organic food, we get living water in our body, we sun gaze, we look into the sun. I believe the sun is an aspect of God, of spirit. And we allow that to clean our luminous field because the field, the etheric body actually creates the mental plane, fourth dimension into the third dimension. We can literally change how we're thinking and perceiving things on those three things alone. Yeah. And these three things are free. It doesn't cost anything. Right. 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 That's what I love about fasting. I'm like, yeah. if you look at the research, the research shows you compress your eating window, the body heals, but you yeah. also connect yourself to you because only you can do it. Nobody did it. You did it. Yeah. And I, and I, there's an empowerment co that comes from that. So, and, and to your point, what I, what I really see in my own life, I see it in the people that we interact with is once you change your health, you change your thoughts. So if you're coming 100%. from, 
a place where you can't get a hold of a happy thought, then come at it from a different angle and change your health. Is that, if you notice that as well? It's a vehicle. You know, this is a multidimensional vehicle. You're leasing it for this life. I believe you've had many of these. And if you knew, I've seen literally thousands of past lives in dream time. I'm a big Toltec dreamer, right? Awesome. Like how, how this body, we put so much importance in this physical vehicle. It's a black hole. We start to realize that this is just like turning a lease in at the yeah. end of our life, right? Yeah. So if that's one thing that I'm going to take care of throughout this life experience, what can I do to make it fully optimal? What can yeah. I do to cherish it? What can I do to give more love to this body, right? A lot of people that are following you now, I'm listening to the consciousness and the collective of your people, a lot of people body shame themselves. Oh, so many. Right? So, so they're many. body shaming. Yeah. You know, the biggest yeah. solution for that is literally look in the mirror. Yep. Yeah. Look in the freaking mirror. Stop 30 minutes a day. Make this the first thing you do. This would be my meditation. Yeah. And I would just compliment this body. Thank you yeah. so much for supporting me. I would give my feet a massage every single day with the best oil I could find. Thank you for carrying me through this life journey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And I would look at myself in the eyes. Yeah. It would, I would have a candle in front of me. Dude. It would be this great ritual that I would do for probably seven to 11 days. I'd heal all those body issues. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, any issues of the gut, any issues that you're seeing in your skin or your eyes or anything else, you do that. You put that much love and compassion into your stored memory device, this yeah. water suit, this electrical suit, your life will completely change. Yeah. 1000%. Yeah. You know what? I actually have applied that principle. Yeah. When, I, when I was 20 years old, I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue and they gave me the syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome. And all the doctors said, just go home. You're, you're pretty much can't do anything. Try these medications. That's your fate. And what I finally got to was uh, really looking at nutrition. This is how I got into nutrition. But then I yeah. also started changing my self-talk. And I thought, well, if I can't get off the couch, what I can do is start meditating and thinking about how I want my life to be. And I started visualizing that. Then when I would look in the mirror, I would find one thing I loved. There's always one thing you can find uh, that you love about your body, which is the opposite of what people do. People look in the mirror and they go, I hate this, I hate that, I hate mm. that. Just pick one thing. Maybe it's your eyebrows, maybe it's your hair, maybe it's you have the perfect little ears, whatever it is, something hey, that stop you- stop talking about me. <laughs> Maybe it's your amazing beard, yes. but if, if we just did that every day, you, you would start to go, wait, my ears are great. My eyes are great. And you, it would just expand. But what I see is people go the opposite. They look in the mirror and they criticize themselves. And that is the fastest path to an unhealthy life. It's just a virus of the mind. Yeah. We're taught, we're taught to do that. You know, yeah. even look at the filters. You can swipe left or swipe right now on Instagram and all of a sudden you look completely different. It's like so the true. upgraded <laughs> enhanced version. It's so true. Right? It's so, so true. Yeah. If we really, if we really started looking at ourselves by the compassion and the grace and the character that we hold versus just this physical suit, could you imagine the type of uh, changes we could shift on yeah. a collective level? Yeah. So it is nutrition, right? Yeah. It's I was going to say, let's, I want to dive in a little bit to yeah. nutrition. Go ahead, keep going, yeah. but I want to make sure we don't miss that key point. Yeah, because your your peeps are all about nutrition, yeah. fasting, nutrition, and yeah. fasting is the greatest miracle. We can both agree with Agreed. that. I think it's one of the best medicines you can do. Amen. Um, yeah. Changing thought around nutrition. I think when you're in a fasted state, what I experience is I open up more theta state, which means that mm. my brain's a little bit slower. I can push stuff into my long-term memory storage much more effectively. So when I am fasting, I take advantage of that. If I'm- yep. If my self-talk is off, if I'm, you know, Drew, you, you got a big head, like you look like Charlie Brown with a pumpkin body, like whatever it is, <laughs> maybe that's a thought or whatever. Um, if that's in my mind, what I would do is record my voice in a 20 to 30 minute audio. And I did this in the past and I would put like 432 Hertz music behind it. You can do this in InShot. You can do this in uh, Audacity. There's free apps. Mm -hmm. Just record your voice, right? complimenting yourself, telling yourself this, that, because your, your voice is the primordial sound. Mm -hmm. It's the sound of you before you came into the physical suit. In the beginning was the sound. So I would listen to that before I go to bed every single night, 20 to 30 minutes, put it on. I would listen to myself affirming myself. 
And I would do this for 20 to 30 days. And what I noticed was a lot of the thoughts that I had that were holding me back, that were thoughts of, uh, you, you know, just low vibra vibratory thoughts faded away. I no longer had those because I was pushing it in my unconscious mind, like Lipton was talking about. Yep. And you can do it your, yourself. And actually there's YouTube videos with Delta frequencies. Yep which are great that have affirmations on there too. So if you don't want to record your own voice, you can just listen to those. Yep. But filling your mind with that. Most people fill their mind with garbage. Yep. It's like so this. true. So you know what Bruce said? Bruce said that when you go to sleep and you come out of sleep, you mm -hmm. are in the most suggestible state. So that's the type. So what you're saying, actually, he is proven through his work and yeah. his and he's a biochemist. If you guys are not familiar with Bruce Lipton, like he's got a Ph.D. and he's really proven how these theories work. But if you can think good thoughts going to bed, you can think good thoughts coming out of bed. You're in that theta state. That's how somebody like Drew Canole can change the patterning that maybe his father put into him, because you start to use these times of your day to to reprogram yourself. 100%. And then on top of that, we start feeding ourselves good nutrition and you literally change the cells and their vibration from the inside out. It, from a science level, that's what I hear you saying. Absolutely. Yeah. And slowing down more throughout the day. So in the beginning, at night and in the morning, definitely. But when we come into our heart, when we take the longest journey, which is 17 inches of our life, we come out of the mind, which is where the world wants you. They want you in your mind because yep. you're a lot easier to control. Yep. If you're in your mind, then anything in the external world is what the mind wants for proof or validation that it's existing in the right place, right? But when yep. you come into your heart, you're in the present moment. And when you're in the present moment, then you see a lot more than what you can see with this. So true. So yep. being in your heart, you're literally opening up a theta state at will whenever you want, as long as you're in your heart. And you've yeah. seen it, right? You could go outside right now and a hummingbird would literally fly up to you if you're in your heart or you'll see license plates, like different numbers, synchronicities will show. I think God is synchronicity. I think spirit, mm. the universe exists in synchronicity to show us, hey, I'm watching, I'm listening, I'm here with you. And when we Love see that. these signs all day, every single day, we know we're on the right path. I love that. Oh nope. my gosh. Mic drop. That was really good. I love that. So, okay, let's talk about nutrition. So yeah. uh, there's some, some sort of myth that I see permeating the, again, my following is when we eat fruit, for example, or we eat vegetables, then we must be getting nutrients into our body. Yeah. And what I love what you guys have done with the Organifi products is you've taken the concepts of great nutrition and good nature made food and you've cleaned it up put it together and made it even better than the original that's my perception of it yeah. um how why or why did you come up with these um formulas and do you think that we can improve our health by just eating good quality food alone or do you think we have to lean into products like what we've got in organifi yeah um, do I think you absolutely need Organifi? Absolutely not. Right. If you're eating sludge, if you're going to drive through, you're eating fast food every single day. And even pre, even before that, let me back up a little bit more. Most people are eating the wrong way. Mm. We're, we're okay, eating great. to get through it because we believe that we need it to fill our body, the battery of the human, because the heart's the battery, right? Mm -hmm. We are electromagnetic beings. So we're voltage beings. And because we just cram food in our mouth, we're not extracting the essence of food. And when I say essence, I mean the etheric nutrition as well mm. as the mm. biological nutrition that we need, which is why I love fasting so much. Right. Because when you're in a fasted state, your body is much more able to extract the etheric energy mm -hmm. that's all around you versus even needing to consume food. I mean, there's yeah. people on the planet guys that, are, that can go 30 to 60 days without eating anything. Yeah. They're absorbing yeah. prana. They're absorbing the bio photons of the orchids yeah. that are behind you. They're just looking Their Their appetite is satiated because of what they see. Yeah. They're eating with their eyes. La dolce vita, right? Italians yeah. eat with their eyes or say manja manja. I think that's how you say it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, Maybe, and, uh, to, to that point, before you go on, I just want to yeah. say that nothing will change your relationship to food like learning to fast. 
Yeah. Because when you first do it, all your limiting beliefs bubble up and you get to see them. And you get to see that maybe you used food as a state changer. And then all of a sudden you get to sort of kind of come back to yourself and go, okay, I don't have food right now to make me happy. What else can I do? So to your point, what do I see? I see a hummingbird out there. I see I can put a happy song on. I can do something different that's going to change my state. And all of a sudden you break free from that need to have food to make you happy. So that's what I heard in what you just said. Yeah, it's um, the need for to have food to make us happy has become very real. And it's yeah. just a program. That's all it is. And you can change that program at will whenever you want. Yeah. So for me, when I fast, it's um, not even fast when I eat. More importantly, it's almost like I do this. Um, and I learned it at an ashram in France. I went three years ago and I was around uh, all types of people from all over the world. And they all spoke different languages. So there was literally no talking right. at this ashram. You're just quiet the whole time. People would have bright eyes. Like you'd look at them and it looks like the sun was coming out of their face. Like they had so much internal chi. We would watch the sun every morning. We would uh, meditate, pray together. And uh, one of the things that I took away from that trip more than anything, and I was there for a couple of weeks, was the way that they would eat. Hmm. So they would do what's called Harni Yoga. And it's the nutrition of eating. So you would literally eat in silence. You'd take 30 to 45 minutes to eat even a salad or, or soup, right? Mm. This was all vegan at the time. Um, and you would eat slow and you'd really feel the essence of the food. And I, I think love it. you would eat slow. You would, and by the end of the two weeks, I literally, my psychic abilities went up so much. I was able to see what was coming out before it would even get to me. Wow. Um, and I would feel it in my body. I'd feel it charging every single cell. And it, and I wasn't eating as much. It was like a micro or mimic fast, right? So 500 calories, 600 calories a day, but that was enough because I was getting all the nutrients, the etheric qualities of the food, as well as the biological. So, so do you yeah. think then that actually is a really interesting reframe that when you go to eat nutritious food, the more concentrated it is, the more highly nutritious it is, nutritious it is, the less you need of it. Exactly. The more conscious you are, essentially. So if if I, I'm just going to use, I mean, I, I just want everybody to know, I absolutely love your products and I love them for, for how I feel. I love them for when I recommend them, people feel the difference. I personally think when you take a supplement, when you eat a food, when you do something like an Organifi drink, you should feel a difference. And if you don't feel a difference, it could easily be just dead food. So when I do red juice, for example, at three o'clock in the afternoon, it gives me a lift. Is that because it's so concentrated, the nutrients are so concentrated that I'm experiencing it different than per se, than like a salad? Yes, that's part of it. There's a lot that goes into it, right? Okay. So three o'clock in the afternoon, um, you grab the red juice. Red juice has rhodiola, which the Vikings used for energy way back in the day. It was like a staple when they were on their big boats, like rowing for hours on end, days on end. Uh, rhodiola was one of the things that they would use. And the reason is because it lowers stress. Mm -hmm. so we all know when we lower stress in our body, our body works better. We lose weight more effectively. That's yep. like one of the byproducts of it. If you're stressed out, you're going to hold everything that you eat. So if we can lower stress 10 to 20% by changing what you're putting in your body, by changing even your breath, most people are mouth breathers, as you know. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know if you had my buddy James Nestor on. He'd be a good guy to have on. But uh, no, no, I will. But yeah, I've been, he, I've been recently taping my mouth at night. I've been trying. Do you do the mouth tape at night? Um, no, but I use. I have like these nasal inserts because I have a mm. deviated septum. Okay. So it it mimics kind of mouth taping. You're just yeah. focused on breathing through your nose more. Um, but what I was saying is rhodiola, right? There's cordyceps in there which they've mm. done tons of research on cordyceps. In the 1987 Olympics, there was nine women that won gold medals from China. And they thought that these women were on steroids. So they tested all their blood after they, they won all these gold medals. I believe that was the year. My year may be off a little bit. Um, but what they found was that they were doing, they were superdosing cordyceps. So talk about stamina, talk about energy. You mix cordyceps with rhodiola, 
added to all the berries that are in there. These are real berries. The antioxidant uptake from red juice is phenomenal, right? The xeno, yeah. um, the xeno stem cells that you actually get from these, like um, it, it's unparalleled. Like there's just so many antioxidants. So it, it, it causes more stem cells to actually grow in your body. Yep. So these berries interesting. are interesting. Yeah. Well, I, I feel a definitive energy lift. So yeah. the combination you put in there, I can really feel if I, if three o'clock's a little low, I can get myself into a new state. Do, do you feel like, like, so let's go to something like green juice. You know, a lot of my audience um, is our menopausal women. We're really focused on getting them to eat more greens. A lot of them tell me, I don't really have time to eat greens. Yeah. So I'm just zooming through my day. If I do a scoop of green juice, does it have the same fiber? Does it have the same effect on uh, improving liver and gut health as if I had, again, I'm comparing it to food because I, would it be the same effect as like a big salad? I love a big salad because I think we should have a salad every single day. I know I do. Okay. Um, and depending on the season, like I, I do a lot of dosha work, like Ayurvedic type stuff mm, too. Okay. So sometimes I'll have more cooked veggies than like a raw salad, but I don't think there's any comparison to eating living high quality organic food. Got it. Yes. Right? Okay, great. And um, so that I would start with that. Okay. Added to it, of course, green juice would be an amazing compliment. It's got ashwagandha, okay. which lowers stress 29% in clinical trials. So a lot of people are stressed out. You're not going to put ashwagandha on a salad. It's going to taste terrible, right? And luckily, <laughs> because we have mint, we have coconut water, like crystallized coconut water. Um, we have mint. We have ashwagandhas in there as well. There's a little beet juice too. But what it does, I find, is it's almost like when you do a, a breath work ceremony for like mm. 30 to 60 minutes or you do yoga, right? You do a mm. great yoga session and your body just feels so good. It's like yoga in a cup when you drink green juice. You feel so zen, you feel so relaxed. That's why we started with green juice. It was our very first product. We only sold that for like a year and a half. Wow. We sold out five times. It was nuts. Everybody and people are still subscribing from like six years ago when we first launched it every single month, having green juice every single day. That's and, crazy. Uh, and now yeah. there's a lot of people mimicking green juice. There's a 100%. lot of, yeah. So what, how do you guys source your stuff? Because again, I'm going to say that there's something, uh, I'm very sensitive to quality of supplements and drinks. And I can tell if it's nothing, I can tell if it's toxic and I can tell if it's going to do something to me. And when, again, when I, when I use your products, there's a definite energetic shift. So my guess is you're sourcing really good quality. Highest, yeah. Highest quality in the world. Uh, we don't mess around with that. Yeah. To us, it's not about um, there's a lot of companies out there that would sacrifice quality of ingredients for money because yeah. they can put some fluff in there from China or something like that, and then charge the same amount. Uh, that's not us. So we choose really good USDA organic farm. Number one, we have like nine certifications that awesome. are all organic. We can send those to you. Of course, Paul check. And I were just talking about this the other day. I was on one of his lives. And so we have all the, all the papers, first of all, so yeah, if you can't important. get all the papers showing that it's an organic yes. product, I would stay away. Second yeah. to that would probably be uh, glyphosate. You do not want glyphosate in your stuff. This is like an antibiotic. There's so much glyphosate on the planet now. It's hard yep. to find products that actually don't have it. Yeah. So ours is residue free. So the farms that we use, we make sure that there's none of this glyphosate. Yeah. You know, glyphosate dr drives heavy metals into the brain even deeper. 100%. I had, I had uh, Stephanie Sneff, who is the leading expert uh, out of MIT um, on my podcast. And yeah, when you go, when you listen to her, it makes you want to hide inside <laughs> with glyphosate in I the bet. air. I mean, it really messes up our microbiome and our brain. Yeah, I bet. And there's something, there's things you can do. Skin brush, sauna, I do every single day. I have a glutathione nebulizer. So I saw I that. NAC glutathione, which will help push it out of your liver, right? Rebounding yeah. on the trampoline is a good thing. Hot and cold therapy. We've talked about that before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so but you want to make sure your food doesn't have it in. Because if you're doing all these things and you're also consuming food that has it in there, you're just, 
you know, begging Peter to pay Paul, essentially. Do you do you go out to eat? I do. Yeah, I eat out, but I make sure that it's farm to table. I make sure it's organic. I'm talking to the owner of the restaurant. I'm having yep. him out. I'm asking him where he sources his, his food. Yep. Right? Where does this grass-fed steak come from? Is it grass, grass finished? Is it grain finished? Like, tell me about this. And then I'm, I'm a pretty ritualistic guy. Like once I find a good restaurant and have high quality um, connections with them, or I yep. visited the farm where they're sourcing their food, generally I'll, I'll stick with them. I'll eat there five, six days yeah. a week, right. you know, or I'll, I'll have other people come join me for lunch or something like that. So, yeah. 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 I mean, I just, the more I've studied nutrition, the less I eat out. That's why I'm curious. Yeah. Uh, even, I mean, far, we do the same thing, farm to table, organic. Uh, we have yeah. a co code words we go look for. But, you know, the list uh, of viable options is not as big as, as I'd like it to be. So eventually we just stay home and eat because it's so much we know we're getting quality food. Well, and it's better. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I bet you if you're anything like me, you're an amazing cook. Like you can make whatever yep. exactly how you want it. Yep. Like, and it's probably better than most restaurants, even five yes, star restaurants, is. because yep. it's you, it's your love, it's your expression. It's That's just right. different. That's right. Yeah. So let's sum it up with this. If I, I really want to speak to the person who is struggling with their health, struggling with their life, you know, I feel yeah. like I feel like the last year we've sort of seen people fall into two camps. We've seen people that have fallen into the I'm a victim of the pandemic. I'm struggling. And we've seen people that are reinventing themselves. That is so interesting to me yeah. to watch all mm -hmm. the reinventation that's happening. So this person's stuck. What do we, how do we help them unstick themselves? I mean, where, what are the steps? I love this forgiveness idea. Give us some steps that help people move out of a stuck place. Um, I, I would write down where they're stuck, right? Like I said, I'm a big ritual guy. I would write down where they're stuck, all the ways that they've uh, adapted that are no longer serving them. Yeah. And I would literally write them down on small pieces of paper, right? And I would have a, a ceremony, literally a death ceremony. Mm. I would burn it. I'd yeah. get a little fire. I'd throw it in the fireplace. I would burn it. I would make it like a send off. And then I would, I would reinvent or I would write down who I'm going to be how I'm going to show up in the next 90 days. Yep. And then I would make, uh, I'd probably come up with five or 10 micro commitments that I could do every single day. That Such would as? Get, that would get me to that place 10 days from now. So my micro commitments for somebody that's stuck, number one, I would hydrate myself every single day, mineralize myself so that my ATP and my mitochondria is on another level. I would Love not it. only drink more water, I would probably say thank you for all the water that I'm drinking. I would bless my water. Because as we know, the water that we replace in the body replaces the memories that are stored in our body as well. Second to that, I would, I would embark on some type of meditation practice. So either meditation or open-eyed meditation like Japanese style or sun gazing would be a good thing. I would even include Qigong or Tai Chi if you're into that kind of thing, which I am. I love, okay. I love all those modalities. Love it. So I would continue to go with that micro commitment as well. Okay. Uh, next up would be order. I would make sure my whole house is clean consistently. Mm. If there's something I haven't worn in two years, three years, I'd give it away. I would make sure every single dish, every single plate, every single book in my house is accounted for. I would know where everything is because a clean that. house, clean mind, clean house, clean car, clean mind. Love it all it. comes back to that. You're going to have more time to think, yep. right? Yep. I would do something creative every day, like pick up a musical instrument, go into the unknown. I would paint. I would do something to nourish the five-year-old child inside of me mm -hmm. to remind myself that I don't have to, to do the same thing over and over expecting, you know, different results. I would go into the unknown essentially mm -hmm. is what I would do. Mm -hmm. um, I would eat organic food. Like we've been talking about this yep. whole entire thing. I would do a seven day fast. Absolutely. Yep. Seven day. You could do bone broth water. If you wanted to, even if you wanted to do a uh, juice cleanse with low fruit, I would say, I don't do a lot of fruit when I fast with juice, right? Yeah. It's like pretty much celery or a little lemon and ginger, that kind of stuff. Agreed. So I would do that. That would probably be my starting place. Actually, I was going to say, if, yeah. if you're not different after all of that, uh, yeah. I mean, I can't even imagine that somebody would stay stuck after that. And what I love about everything you said, I think all of it was free. I, yeah, I mean, this, this has been my, my real, um, 
like what's pained my heart is that we have set up a culture here in our country. I know I've got a worldwide audience that you have to have money to be healthy. And I think that's horrible. And I really want to emphasize yeah. the things that are free. And what I heard from you is just a bunch of free things so that people don't have to stay down in that lower stuck vibrational place. Yeah. And get around people that have a higher vibration than you. Yes. Agreed. You know, in, in work for people that have a higher vibration than you, if you have a job now and the people are all toxic and they have a low vibration, yep. like it's not worth putting your hours in at that place Agreed. or a relationship. If you're in a relationship and your partner's low vibration and they're not on the level in which you want to be like, that says a lot. Most people exist. They're here to merely exist. And you look at them, they look like zombies walking around out in the street. My heart aches for these people yep, because they're, they're a divine creator. And inside of them, they can have, be, do anything that they want. And they've just forgotten along the path. Yep. So I love to wake wow. those people up. I love to be a loving interruption for those people. Yeah. A loving interruption. Woo, yeah, I love it. Them. Yeah. So before we finish up, you have the one thing we didn't talk about. If people aren't familiar with you, you, you used to, you were the juice guy. And then yeah. I have so many friends that are like, oh, I used to listen to Drew's Monday motivation where he would just power out motivation like this. Are you yeah. still doing that? Do you do that anywhere? Cause you're, this is like, you have such great insight that I think people can benefit from. Um, I don't, I've been working on new stuff. I, the Drew and You podcast, of course, they can they can catch me there. They can catch right. me on Instagram, Facebook, those things. I'm rarely on social media these days, yeah. But I still check in, and uh, it's crazy what's happening in the world. You know, right. I'm talking a little bit more about that and how to yeah maintain that high vibe kind of thing. But I've on my social media, anybody who's negative or goes into the woe is me, like I start to unfollow them so that my, my feed can be really clean and uplifting. And actually now, like on my Instagram, for me personally, I have so many travel pictures, like, oh, I'm, and I just start, I send them to my kids. I'm like, let's go here. Let's do this. And I just cleaned up my Instagram so that I yeah. got the negativity off because you that- Oh, that can suck your energy so, so deep. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I love that. So, okay. Season three, you're part of our next season. This is, this is going to air in uh, 2022 and our emphasis for this season is gratitude. So I want to end with this. Uh, do you have a, a, a daily gratitude practice that you don't miss a beat on? And if it is, what is, what are your practices for gratitude? Yeah, it's, it would be sun gazing in the morning. So simply going to the beach, it's like five minutes from my house, standing barefoot, looking into the sun, first thing in the morning. And my Garmin, actually, this watch reminds me of when the sunrise and the sunset mm, is. Love it. So I track time with gratitude. So I know I don't track time based on hours. Mm -hmm. I track time. It's based on the unfoldment of good. So how much okay. good can I experience in my life between when the sun comes up and when it goes down? And the people that are around me, they know they're like, Hey, how, how long do we have until the sun sets? Right. And I'm I like, how much that. good, how much good can we create? So I have like this team of Avengers and we're out like in the streets, like buying stuff for homeless people, like singing music to people in the streets, like giving people hugs. It's really love cool. It. It's, it's, a, it's a, it. it's a phenomenal time and experience. So my yeah. gratitude practice is woven in everything that I do. Yeah. What happens when the sun goes down? <laughs> Do you well, stop this, <laughs> this guy, I'm like a senior citizen, Ah, like yes. literally <laughs> circadian rhythm. It's like, oh, okay. Nighttime yeah. ritual. So yeah. then I have a whole nighttime ritual, probably like you. Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. I've guarded my sleep. Like, like it's the most important thing to me. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. My last question is what today are you grateful for? Uh, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for every person watching this. I'm mm -hmm. grateful for people opening their hearts. Mm -hmm. I think you have a beautiful voice, my friend. And I think you. allowing me to dance with you today and maybe somebody that doesn't believe that the trauma that they've had in the past can be a catalyst for growth or fuel yeah. in their life. So they're starting to open up to that. And I'm grateful for those future messages that we'll receive yeah. 30 to 60 days, or even a couple of years from now, they're like, you know what? I heard you on, on Mindy's podcast and it yeah. changed my life. So I like to hear, I like to hear that the future coming to us now based on what we do today. Yeah. And that's what I'm grateful for. Oh, a loving interruption. Woo, yeah, I love it. Me. Yeah. 
So and before we finish up, you have the one thing we didn't talk about. If people aren't familiar with you, you you used to you were the juice guy, and then yeah. I have so many friends that are like, oh, I used to listen to Drew's Monday Motivation, where he would just power out motivation like this.